in form, but they're not finding victories, right? They're not finding game wins here. That's been a massive problem for them going forward. But yes, ladies and gentlemen, train Mouse Sports versus Hellraisers should be a good one. Both the teams, I'd say, I'd say an outside chance of making that top eight. I don't think anyone had them in their predictions per se, but they're certainly like the, the dark horses, I would go as to far as to say that. Dead Fox especially. Matthew, you okay? Yeah, my cable's a little wrapped. It's there okay. We go. There he's back. Cable the complications. Room. Not the first time. <laughs> and there we go then. It's going to be Mouseball Sword on the T side here. Four sets of armor. Nico, interesting enough, the utility player. He's normally there with the Deagle, maybe the Raid Boss, but he's got the Smoke and Molotov towards the inside side. That makes sense. That's where you get the bomb down most of the time. But that's a Hell Grenade coming in. Look at the damage inflicted. Speedy, Chris J and Dennis taking the brunt of it. So not common, not uncommon, I should say, that we see bomb to be because it'll allow the fast plant, but the need damage was massive. Problem is, Dead Fox, Bonix, and Sticko all had gone out toward Ivy to get early information, and they put themselves so far away from what is the most common play in a pistol round. If it works, it looks brilliant, but now they've got to retake a site. Thankfully, five still up when they arrive. So good efficient play from both the players inside of B to stay and wait for their teammates. And oddly enough, no advancement from the T side on the back of that. You would think they'd try and push up, cut off the rotations early. Dennis, high ground does at least pull back. Two kills, I take that back. One and a half as he gets the assist, but Dead Fox immediately there is going to get Sticko. Stico. Rather unspeedy, it's just going to be Nico remaining. He molots off the bomb, though. There is a kick for the CTs, and that's so nice from Nico. Doesn't really have to commit. Round over, you're absolutely right there. And that's why they don't push down. This means a lot to them. They want to be at that major. And see for the opening round. Fine by Nico, though. Two versus one. And you can see he was a utility player, yes. But he is also one of the best clutches in the team. If he can stay alive last, have that Molotov in hand. It's one of the most overpowered Molotovs in the game. You bounce off the door in the upper ramp. As soon as it goes down, the CTs very unlikely to have a, a smoke there or a leftover smoke in the pistol round. He gets Gets it down perfectly on the bomb, finds a kill as well as the CTs are scuttling around trying to recover the situation. And then, like you said, the remaining CT had no care, had to go up the ladder and challenge. Round win for Mouse Sports. After that insane grenade coming into the lower round for the start of the round, they recover. Grenade goes through. Oh, good shot from Angel onto Nico. Chris, meanwhile, is going to push up, catch off the trade on Sticko, but that opening shot, not too bad from the Deagle because it limits off a bit of their options. Thankfully, they're able to shuffle down the alley, but Dead Fox. He'll cut them off when they do arrive at hell. Bondix slips in to get an AK, and he's also gone out, and it's almost a checkmate situation because Lowell, they might have the lane. They've lost the corners surrounding it, and he's trapped in. Yeah, this is an example of going very fast in the Antico rounds, getting punished for it. You're running into four sports CTs there. They've got the Deagles. They've got the crossfire set up. This is why you do defaults. This is why you try and get map control. Running out towards main, this is how you get shut down very easily. So that hype we saw in the pistol round, instantly shut down here. It's going to be speedy, not known to be the star of the team. That's for sure, and he's in a four versus one, and only a UMP. He does have the bomb, and uh, needs to work with. Just where does he find a kill here? Why are the CTs even face? Play two on the each bomb site, make him commit, take him down. Speedy's got really no chance. I'd say his best bet: find one kill with the UMP, then go down. Not really worth saving it. We'll see what happens as he tries to negate these CTs. Forty seconds remaining, still hoping for someone to make a mistake. That's the aim of the game right now. Shot will give away his position, tries to use what utility he has, the Molotov to win them out, but if their inarticulation of joy rounded out last round, it's, it's come to the doldrums of pensiveness because they're dead quiet. It's now Hellraisers that take back momentum. And it's interesting as well, you talk about that emotional investment, oversaturation in the scene, the major matters so much. Yeah. And you're gonna be seeing people put a lot on the line. To win a major now, you have to win not only the 16 teams at the major, you go back, you add the eight from this that don't make it through, and then you add the 24 from the miners that yep. didn't even make it here. And you really are king the of the world. Qualifiers as well, like yep. the tough, tough road to get here. Um, but there it is, Mouse, like we said, a great pistol approaching them, recovering it, and then I just I hate it when teams go for full, vast executions towards outside when they have the antique situation. I like you just to fall back, treat like a full gun run at point, see what they're presented towards you, use your grenades, allow your rifles to find a pick, then commit together. They weren't even like all five out towards the main at that point. It's three of them go out. They get taken down with those deagles one by one, it felt like as well. There's no real refracts coming in. And there it is. We have got the force by Nico with the AK-47 map. Known to be mechanically one of the most gifted players on the planet right now. Let's see whether he can actually do anything here towards his lower round position. And to give just reference to finish that point, to make the major for these two teams who are both rebuilding, I talked about it, both of them picking up Hello. pieces. Lovely shot, Nico. To bring in players, Dead Fox on one side, Lowell on the other. Just to qualify for the major means you don't have to go through the minor qualification process, which gives you a lot more time and less stress to build up these rosters. And again, both players coming in have stepped up. Dead Fox taking down Chris J in this exact situation. Nico's gonna take him back. Good trade. He's still got long range covered off. Bomb planted down. 
That one gun, it starts to be a massive issue. Low HP as well. Dennis Tim doesn't quite spot to his right side. Thankfully, does hit the one on his left, but Stiko going down, it's going to leave him well and truly in a bit of a problem because Dennis, well and truly away from the bomb, falls to allow the defuse to come in. That player on the upper ramp as well. Low HP with zero. Dennis had to pull the trigger. He lands a lovely headshot there, the Deagle, on the rotating player, the one in the upper ramp. That was more of the sitter. Just need to hit the kneecaps. Would have been fine, but just can't do it. And he gets taken down. The 1v1 situation would have been possible at that point. Yes, the T's get on the bomb, and Nika did a good job with the AK to get some opening frags there for them, but it wasn't quite enough. This has been the, the storyline for Mouse Sports throughout. It's like Nico, such a strong player. Then she head to shoulders above some of the other guys in the team and managing to find a lot of them, space for them to work with. Sometimes not being finished off there. We're going to be another eco going forward. PD50s, Glocks, and a flashbang there in the hands of Speedy. Looks like they're going towards inside. You flash over the window area on the inside bomb site. Flash in, try and get the plant down. Use uh, the human shield approach here. Should be able to get a bomb down. You're going to see the CT setup right now. They are quite passive, but they get a big spray down. Not meant to be, but there it is. Angel opens things up. Couple of frags with him. Bomb not on the site quite yet, and that's going to deny the plant, I would say, at this point. Yeah, Zero's position sliding up. The left wing will make that work. Bit of an interesting situation on both times that they've had the full pistols out from Sports and gone toward B. Again, we mentioned that's not uncommon. Rather than playing a third rotation or a swing position inside Z Connector, they're actually playing aggressively on the choke points on A, which does mean they're a little bit further away. In that case, they play it well enough inside of the site to deny the bomb point, but they could easily give them up and then think about economy. We talked about it last game. It becomes an issue as most sports can build that up with the bonus quite quickly. Well, here we go then. Dead Fox, he was brought in to be the all part. It's quite funny, really. You've got Mouse Sports and Hellraisers. Mouse Sports took Oscar from Hellraisers, brought in Dead Fox, and he's actually been a surprise package, really. No one really saw it coming. Yep. It's been fantastic for them. And we'll see whether it all happens here with Chris J back in the overall himself. He has been quite confusing, all these transfers in the all positions, but zero, he gets taken now. Chris J looking to commit towards the lower ramp. Molotov should take him up position. And I thought he'd be burned alive as with the wall band from Angel to finish him off here. So still a four and four. That's going to slow things considerably. Speedy was already inside B tunnels, brown holes. He backs off of it. And wait upstairs to make sure there's no one going to push through. It'll be beaming help for Dead Fox. We'll sit out toward Ivy and try and cover the lane. Nico needs to be very careful not to get caught as he transitions over, and he's going to go back away from that as well. And that, to me, with him now going to stairs, says this is going to go on to the B site. They can't find an opening. They know the AWT is AWP, excuse me, down toward that Ivy position. So even Nico going that direction to take battle with him doesn't change much. They still have to win against him. Why not just leave him alone altogether? This is still looking very good for Mouse Sports, I have to say. There's one player towards inside. That's Angel. He throws the smoke on the upper ramp. That's okay, but you can see Mouse Sports. They've got control of Brown Halls and Nico holding the flanks as well. A full execution can still come in. And Nico, great backstab potential if he wants to do it. That timing. Two players below the ladder. Nico just leaves it. They're going to go, and he's just put his attention inside the site. They're going to be sitting. Bondic's got to go quickly, though. He's not up the ladder just now. It's up to Angel instead by Spool. They don't check it. It's spammable, but he misses the shots. And still no mo movement from Bondic. He had a massive opportunity, but he couldn't know it. Again, they don't see what we do. The stick out will burn Lowell alive. Bomb will still go down, and Nico's now ready for the flank position. Not only that, it's an op on the high ground. Perfect position in the post plant as Dennis takes out Dead Fox. This has to slow off. Bonnick still fancies it. Does pick up one on Speedy. Surprised he rounds the corner. Nico's still waiting for it. Knows the op's there, and he's got to get away from this. So Flash and back away, or they're going to continue to commit, and he gets caught. Lovely shot from Nico. That's it, because he's the last one with the kit. There's no way Sticko's getting any closer, and Dennis makes sure of it. That's just testament. When we say in the other games, when we say when it's a 4-4 four four situation, it does heavily favor the terrorists at that point. The CDs need to spread themselves a little bit thinner. You can see they committed only one player towards the side. That was Angel. He didn't do a good enough job there towards the inside side. He find one kill at the start of the round, but he was recovering. But then when he actually committed towards the inside, was the only player there didn't find anything. The bomb goes down. Mouse are watching the flanks as well, and they pick up their second round there. So good job from Mouseport to have the awareness. Once they had the 4-on-4 four four situation, get control of Brown Halls, watching that ladder area as well. Smokes go in, take the vision away from the seat. He's bomb planted, and they're trading fragged effectively. Orbs in the hands of Dead Fox, so same story for Chris J. He did open the previous round up, so going to be flashed off for now. Won't have the opportunity to get rolling just yet. Molotov in front of Pop Dog. Keep Lowell down there, contained. They did put a little bit more pressure out toward Ivy this time in the most sports side. Chris J and Dennis both went that direction, but immediately backed off of it. It's not the AWP there this time. Instead, Dead Fox. Lower ramp inside watching Brown Halls. So a very different position. 
yeah, it's it's I call it the shotgun all position. It's a, a bit of a hell mary play. You normally want to get towards the top of the upper ramp there. Some wall bang coming in. Lau takes a bit of damage there. Goes down to 80 HP. That's from the hands of Angel. Need to be careful with that M4 as well. You can see after this reload, he'll only have 20 bullets remaining. So that's like one clip, Matt. So he's actually in a bit of trouble there. That's why you normally want to be spamming with the M4A4. But still, fine for now. There's Mount Dennis now. Commits towards one. Yeah, just gonna bait them in though, but that's a problem. There's two here. Go for the trade, shuffle them out, gets caught entirely. Fondek takes advantage. Instead, it's gonna be Nico trying to Molotov way deep inside of the side, on top of the bomb train, in fact, so that they can try and get to E box, but Fondek's already forward, cuts that off. He still has position inside Pop Dog. Nico's gotta bypass that gap, get toward hell, but Sticko slides up. Very smart playing off his teammate. Communication seems great on the Hellraiser side, at least in this round. A speedy. Rounds off a few shots, no one peeks on him. Disciplined play from Hellraisers, and Chris is gonna have to try and make up for it. I think he just spotted the gun barrel. Sees the elbow as well toward the bottom of Pop Dog, and it's Bondic on two HP, but back away, 13 seconds round over, and make sure that AWP stays alive. Yeah, that's gonna be the main objective at this point. If you do die after the timer, you get no money whatsoever. Chris Shea does find a kill, and the CTs are trying to hunt them down. They know this is a very valuable kill to pick up, but looks like they will be saving the Gillow and the AWP. So that's great for the Terrors going forward, but Hellraisers are a decent round there. They keep three players alive as well, realizing they were dropped frags at that point so we'll see what happens in round number seven i think there is enough money just about to force around this one you can see they've got 3k on two of the players 2k on the other so they could buy another galil head armor and some tech nines to go with the other. i think when you've got two weapons saved it's worth it you can get some umps out as well and uh yeah hell raids is there just actually reading mouse was quite nice he's I suppose looking a little bit stale there on the gun rounds. It's holding up. You can see Dennis in towards that pop dog area. Got Molotov out of position and completely wrecked as they pushed in as well. Nice reactive play for the CTs, but they've only got three pharmacists as well, so both teams quite uh, under-equipped at the moment. Chris early and lovely shot to open it up. Getting an entry T side AWP. Pre-op nerf. Makes it work. Timing is everything. And Dead Fox, though, does have your favorite position. Better shot. Takes the off back in return because he covers off that entire inside position, but they're going to push back off of it. What they should do now as well, after he's shown that presence towards inside of the AWP, he wants to leave the rifle player there by himself, and he goes, and you can see it right now on the connector, he's actually gone in towards uh, that position as well, kind of thinking out how he's going to change his position. Dennis towards Ivy right now. I don't think the T's will be committing any time yet. They've actually got the bomb down towards T spawn, so just want to be showing presence towards his Ivy position and potentially end up towards inner. It's going to be Dennis selling something towards that position, and whether he can actually do anything. As he falls back, as I say that, though. Well, they left bomb at stairs. And this says to me it's going to be B, because they're all setting up for execution. He's going to grab it and join them. Well, it makes sense, right? Because in the previous round, they got that four and four. They managed to do the inside execution. There's just one CT waiting for them. So technically, this should be favorable for them, especially Nikon. That orb step definitely very proficient as well. But Dead Fox has rotated back in towards the other platform. He wasn't there before. It was actually Angel who was alone. So a completely different setup for the CTs, waiting for the commitment from the terrorists. And only two smokes. Do you want those on the lanes down below, or do you want one on the corner here to take away the angle from Dead Fox? That's what it's going to be. Speedy's going to throw it, bounce it, leave a gap so he can drop into the site. That's going to push Dead Fox back immediately, so Utility will isolate the op. Zero gets two on the entry as a result of it. Cuts them off either way from the ground. Finally goes down. It will allow the plant to come through. Dead Fox, he's got position, just almost looks away at the wrong time. Tries to snap back and said Sticko slides out, gets the kill. It's all on the low. One versus three. He's not able to get into the high ground. Missed Molotov. He's actually going to try and take advantage of that. Slip up, but... It's the gun instead that gets the kill, and Hellraisers will find their fifth. It will indeed. Well, there it is. The execution towards Inner once again didn't really have the same sort of utility to work with they did previously. It's Chris J, who's opening up the map once more, but Dead Fox, like you said, one of my favorite positions to play as well. Brown Halls, if you have one AWP there as well, especially with no confrontation, you can actually afford to have one CD on that side of the map, four rifles outside. In this particular example, though, he actually flicks up, takes down Chris J, manages to fall back as well, and they can actually read the situation quite nice at that point. Yes, the bomb goes down for Mouse Sports, but doesn't look like they can really buy into this one. It's 5-2 for Hellraisers, and a chance to breathe potentially as well. In terms of the buy Mouse Sports can bring, I think they can probably bring a couple of Tech 9s and PT-50s, maybe some Deagles, try and get the bomb down here with a couple of smokes potentially. We'll see what they decide to do as they bring the money down to the 2K mark. This is gonna be three Deagles, no nades whatsoever. The Deagles can be very powerful on train, a long range map and lots of choke points for you to actually go and face. And Nico, very, very strong Deagle player indeed, but he takes a ton of nade damage, but that's never stopped him before. Let's see if he can do anything with this desert Deagle. Three players at long is so massive for Dead Fox to go against. Four players now as Lowell comes up that direction as well. He missed that op shot. You're going to have problems because Sticko then has to rotate back around to compensate. Nico's already made his way towards Sandwich. 
And this is actually a reverse play. Rather than contest that with the smoke down, let's go spar off with Nico. Let's see if we can take that position back from him. His shot for the Deagle, we know he's good with it. Unfortunately, that time lets him down. Bondic able to find him. And now, because they give up Ivy, they can play it with a more passive hold. I say that, and suddenly there's an opening. Speedy on one with a Glock. Lowe with the Deagle, and it's Bondic that's now going to be hunted down. This is a battle and a jostle for position, never mind the bomb site itself. They're just trying to push each other back to create space. Unfortunately, that'll only go so far, but good effort, I have to say, all things considered from Mouseports. Yeah, didn't invest too much into that round of the Eagles and PT50s, but they got a couple of kills, and it does help pressurize the CT economy at overall 6 2. It's Bondic with that bird's eye view on top of the trains. Moaning down the Galil, doing some great work there. And we'll see what happens. We go to round number nine here. They're all back out of the court in the hands of Chris J. He's been great with it. Hasn't got a ton of frags, but he's been opening up the map consistently for Mouse Sports. The two rounds they have won, it begins with a Chris J pick at the start of the round. So doesn't necessarily mean he needs a lot of kills, just opening it up each time. That's absolutely fine by me. Dead Fox open. He's on the AWP himself. We haven't seen too much aggression from him. He's going to be towards Ivy this time. So they're being a little bit reactive. Mouse Sports have shown presence towards his area in the previous round. So he's going to be there this time. He was inside before. Let's see if he can find his first pick. Chris J will be challenging as well. This will be where the first confrontation comes in. Watch the jump cross from Chris. Oh, the shot. other way. That is beautiful. As Dead Fox takes Dennis, that was the bait. That was to try and get his teammate in position. Yeah. And he's having none of that. And that's why most teams do the run boost when you try to jump across. You do have a possibility of dying. The idea is even if Dennis goes down, Chris J is supposed to make the kill regardless. And then it's sort of four and four. But the good news is, Nico, he's done it again. He's done an AK headshot to kick things off. Taking out Sticker on the other side. We missed that one, but still all the action going on towards Ivy. And we have that four and four, which does favor the terrorist. Just to reiterate once again. Watch this push back in A main. Good position. Don't even need to really peek beyond this. They actually back away. I'm surprised they don't leave one player there to hold that because they don't have the information that's on B, but because of all the mid-round rotations, and in, as you mentioned, the last two four versus fours, they have gone onto the B site. They're going to anticipate that, and seemingly correctly so. Dead Fox will take down Nico. He's trying to hold them on A and give the three players now on to B a better chance, but it's becoming a little bit predictable. Speedy, he's already in the upper sidewalk. Though, drops down, caught, catches himself on the ladder. Leaves it too easy for zero. Thankfully for his sake, as we mentioned with Nico in the start, they're able to trade it back elsewhere and get the bomb down. So. Bombs a magnet, pull it toward them. They have to play positions to their advantage to pull back this one-man deficit in the post plate and Lowell. Wrong position to be in. Flash comes out. Zero's already beside him. Chris in this position with an op. It's done. Above. Well, that's where death comes from. It certainly does, Matt. And it's going to be an equal situation. Nice work from Dead Fox. He's being a little bit dynamic here as your. But this was a fantastic shot. Like I said, Dennis jumping across. Even if he dies, Chris is supposed to get that kill in return. But that's such a crazy kill from Dead Fox to get and to pull back as well. It was Nico who found the, the four and four afterwards. We didn't see how he picked it up. But it was towards Sticko. But there it is. Mouse Sports towards inside once again. Can't find the trade frags they need. And it's going to be another Hellraiser round here. 7 2. That's such a hard flick to hit, even standing still ready for it. Yeah. And yet. It looks like we're going to have a pause called in here. This might be... It was called pretty late in freeze. I mean, it could be tactical. It is tactical, yeah. Okay, from Mouse Sports, not surprising. But, th th like, that shot, even if you're standing there waiting for it with your reactions at the ready to hit that, is still hard to hit. He was walking back out and then realized, oh, I have to hit that stops, because remember in CS, for those of you who don't play along at home, like Chad does, you have to stop dead and then flick and hit. So that's, like, two mechanics in one sec... Under one second, like, half a second. Super impressive. Well, then... The reason we've got a pause coming for Mouse Sports is working out what kind of buy they have. Chris J's orbs been very influential so far in terms of finding the picks, but that's not a possibility. They will be buying into this round. I can tell you right now it's going to be three AKs, one Galil, and a Chris J Tech 9. Chris J keeping his money stronger than everyone else. He's giving it at the 2900 mark. That's actually a good idea. It's not a big deal if they lose this round. They're going to be a maximum loss bonus. This means going forward, if they do get a bomb down here, they can still buy across the board, and Chris J can buy the AWP. So this is why he won't be actually investing too much into this round. Still winnable for sure. Next we have Nico with an AK 47. Got no head armor, that's a bit more of an issue there. You can see he'd be more vulnerable to the headshots there, but he's so fast anyway, maybe they won't even have a chance, who knows. Zero immediately deploys the flames to hold them off. He's got to watch inside of the A site. That was a clever play from Nico. If that had worked, he could have cut off easily two rotations. He goes down, what? instead they've got to go back over to ward B, but already inside of the site, Chris J jumping through, tech nine shot. Another bomb plant to come in, and Bondic over commits, doesn't check the corner, speedy pops out right time. Thankfully, Angel's there to pick up another. And Lowell on two is going to get taken down by Flames. Early Molotov on that bomb, though. One versus three. One. There's two kits. He has picked up another one. You're dead right, rotating around. He can bounce this off the door. He's got to go right now on low HP. Wins. This is going to catch Dead Fox. It's going to land. That's two ticks. He just barely gets away. And Sticko stands on the end of it, takes a little bit of damage. They still have a little bit of time. Angel surprisingly waiting for this. On the other side of the smoke, isn't going to be able to spot through it. Now, as it, as it dissipates, 
And has he got there in time? I think just because they got on the diffuse early. That's he got pretty excited never speedy when he threw the first one like he said. A little bit early there, but he picks up a second. The smoke is good towards the upper platform as well. But what was this kill from Christian? I think this is a jumping tech nine. The little flick might have just landed in time, but still it looked nuts from uh, Zero's point of view there. But it will be a Hellraiser's round. Decent job from Mouseworth, like I said. They get the bomb down there, so they still can get a full buy with the maximum loss bonus. And Chris J has the orb. That's the important part going forward. 8-2. Mouseworth's shown a lot of presence towards inside, I have to say, so far. They seem to be getting the bomb down consistently, so I guess why not? No double orb set up from Hellraiser's just yet. Can be a very go-to strategy for the train, especially an orb centric map as we go into round number 11 here. Something a little bit faster by the looks of things. Nico fluffing his smoke up towards Side Alley there. Actually going to be smoking himself out of it. So that's not ideal. Oh, and Angel with a oh. great line up there. Takes the bomb down as well. He doesn't realize Lowell's gone by him, so he's actually traded back. That is a bizarre situation. So too is Nico's kill as he gets dead box. The flash was so perfect, but one player gets by and Lowell makes up for it. Thankfully so, because if all three go down, round over. Zero may still make that so, as Lowell again has to be the one to trade it. He's got three kills looking for his fourth in the round, but Zero there. It's going to continue this absolute barrage of rounds now for Hellraisers. They pick up what is their sixth in a row. Oh, that was an absolute brawl, Matt. It's difficult to really analyze that one for you. You can see the smoke from Nico there. It was designed to go towards Ivy at that point. That's just like segregating CDs on that side of the map. He misses it, and there's this crazy flash going towards Pop Dog as well. But Nat Lau, he's not made entrance. He's backing them up, and it felt like it could kill on anywhere at that point. Comes down to the 1v1. It's such a massive round for Mouse Sports as well. Yes, they have maximum loss bonus. They don't get the bomb down. Zero picks it up, finding a couple of frags at the end for the end. And I think, are they taking a pause once again? They are. You've got four. Yeah, like it's like it can be a little bit tilting. They look quite calm at the moment. Like Nico, the in-game leader, he can be known to let things kind of get it into his head and get a bit frustrated. It looks reasonably calm at the moment. Not shouting too much, but they're still very much in this one. It's still the first half of it on the T side. Still could get 9-6. That's perfectly acceptable. But in terms of the buy, like we said, maximum loss bonus means $3,400 coming to your accounts next round, regardless of the bomb going down, of course. But if they do just go Tech Nines with the money around the 2K mark, you can still buy into the next. But you still have a chance with these Tech Nines to make something happen. The problem is, four players have a head armor. That does make you a little bit weaker going forward. Good nade goes in once again. Doesn't have the same sort of damage he did in the pistol, I have to say. Well, and zero backs away. Inside bombsite once again, Matt. They, they seem to be heavily focusing on this area. They're not having much luck towards out. They are getting the bomb down in there, so I guess why not? They've bought a couple of Molotovs for that post-plant situation once again. You'll see the smokes go down. I want to see them push down, though, towards Connector, towards CT spawn, and try and shut down the rotations. That is if they get in towards the bombsite at all, though. Let's see what happens. Flames down. Zero's already there. Can't land the first shot. Watch behind him because he's left himself exposed. Angel, thankfully, was there to cover it off, but doesn't make up for it on the second one. One too many. Shot comes bomb from down. Lowell, you're dead right, bomb dropped. Unfortunately, it's up beside the train. Good position from Lowell. Finally, they pushed forward. If they had done that very early on, it might be a much different case. Let's keep in mind, there's been four rounds where the retake has been successful, all of them with plants on this B site. Angel, he's going to back away from this, and Lowell's still a bit of a problem for them. He's picked up an AWP as well. He's going all over the map, rotated all the way through the outer yard, back to the ladder, and he's going to have position on this. The problem is they still can't get to the bomb. 36 oh. seconds, and that's going to become even harder as Bonnet gets the shot, drops down away from Lowell's position. Speedy, he's still not picked up a gun, but this is all. Oh, timing is everything. He's going to get this kill for sure. There it is. I'm not sure why Sticker would commit to that one. Oh. Now he's given them an opportunity. Two versus one. Bonnet, though, still has the bomb in his possession. That he's had to pick it up. Extremely good awareness from Lowell. Knows one was likely hunting. Reads the bait. Bondic, though, still in position. 13 seconds. All he needs is one kill here. That'll do. One and stay alive. He has let Lowell pick up Bomb. Knows he's going for it. No speed he's above oh. as well, but he hits the shot. Finally, Mouse Sports able to convert. Lovely stuff there from Speedy, especially Lowell as well in that previous situation. I'm not sure why Sticko had the push here. You've got the Bomb down. You've got Vision as well. Two of the CTs looking at it. And Sticko has to walk into the cross. The orb has been given away. And you can see, yeah, I can see the frustration on their faces right now. That's not, that's not a round they should be losing. Sticko holding up towards the pop dog position. When they commit, he can come in for the easy flank at that point. He's got no information as to what they're doing in those brown holes at that stage. A bit of a blunder from him, and you can see how the money has been a problem for Hellraiser. Yes, they're winning multiple rounds in a row, but it's come down to so many tight situations. Help Mouse Sports have been bringing them down to clutches. Lots of 1v1s. Yes, again, the lion's share of the rounds, but this could be the start of the Mouse Sports comeback now. As we go into round number 13, I do think we have two CD players towards the brown hole position, pushing this up a ramp. Famous and M4, not as strong as the M4. And now Chris J, fully equipped. Uh, this is a very favoured round towards the Mouse Sports team at the moment. Yeah, it's interesting the situation is what it is, considering the stack of rounds. As we said, it was six in a row for Hellraisers. If they do manage to win this, obviously that means reset.
Lowell's managed to save up money, so too is Chris. That'll be around 14. I would expect the force buy. This is where we can quickly find ourselves back to 9-6, and all that good yeah. work they've done gets erased. That's why I said 9-2 is still not over. It's just one round in the economy to swing. That's it. And this is looking pretty bleak for Hellraisers in this one. One minute remaining. They're running out of grenades. They've got no kit here. There's a two Famuses, a UMP. It's not looking great. And we've got the Chris J all pad again. All the teasing to do at this point, full default like they're doing. Execute towards outside the wall of smokes this time. Let's not just walk out one by one. Get all the smokes down. Molotov towards connector. Flash in. Once the bomb's planted, in my opinion, that's round over. If the bomb goes down clean, they've got no chance of retaking this. Dead Fox and Angel have a bit of vision down the lane. Bondic instead, though, he fights forward. Ah. Nearly catches a second on Dennis. But it's Angel to fall to Chris. Still leaves the AWP in position, but... Unfortunately, Dead Fox is completely limited because of that AWP, so he can't quite shuffle back over to hell. They're already on the site. The one saving grace in it is Sticko's position. He's gonna catch Chris. They try and pin him off. Babbitt's back out, finds a second. If he had hit the third and Dennis goes down, they deserve to win the round on his heroics alone, but Dennis now picks up his particular third in the round. <laughs> Speedy's there to whop out of the fire and stays alive as well. Nicely done. Yeah, Zero knows exactly where he is, but good reaction from Speedy. Steps out the wide face from the fire and takes his head off as well. But what a great round from Hellraiser's overall. All things considered, I thought they were out of that. Like I said, the full execution comes in. They make the lesser weapon. They have worked to some extent. They find a single kill that UMP, then a double with the Famous. Like I said, that third comes in as well, which is a very possibility considering the situation. They had no idea he was in there. Could have fallen apart, but there it is. Hellraiser's eco coming in. 2k across the board, they probably upgraded some PT50s at this point. You could like rush inside. We haven't seen much aggression with the CDs at all on this um, so Obviously, you have two schools of thought. You go super aggressive like SK do and keep changing your setup every round and be very dynamic in that sense. You can just play a slow and steady game like how are doing, maybe just moving the orb around every now and then. But for now, none of that's prevalent. It's going to be PT50s and USPs. Try and hold off these first kills with Nico doing some work towards that side. And the teammates, they're in a plant the bomb right now. Round over. Yep. Gamble for the stack doesn't work out. Still, though, you have to say them. They know it's a full eco, and they're still rushing a particular area. They had no real information as to what it was. Yes, Nico's calling it a bit of a distraction outside. He does find a kill, but still, Nico's actually running into like shotguns and five sevens there. It really makes you win sometimes when I'm watching these teams go into these full anti eco situations, just all inning at the start of the round. So now the fight is on just to get 10 rounds when it looked like they were unstoppable. They'll buy in, but no AWP again this time for Dead Fox, which has been a factor, you have to say. He's looked sharp. He only have eight kills lowest on his team, but he's had some very strong ones early on in rounds. Particularly over at B at the corner and hitting that bait out toward long at Ivy. Well then, round number 15. It's still looking very promising for Masters going forward. They bring the 9-6 back. It's actually a decent half of them after it was 9-2 at one point. It's actually looking much better. Especially on the AWP, of course. It's going to be five M4s for Hellraisers. No kits, no head armor. Not a big deal against the AKs. And very limited in terms of grenades. Smokes, two of those and a couple of flashbangs. That's about it. Probably want to be a bit more aggressive this time. They're taking a bit of a gamble. Four players outside, one holding in. Let's see if they can find anything here. They line up an eco. There's a ton of damage, but can't find the frag just yet. They nearly deadly lined up. Stick on Dead Fox. Both take damage from that. Meanwhile, back over to the inside tactics, up toward the corner. Lowell's out there before Zero as well. If he jumps up, he's got to land and get his aim set before they get locked onto him. Thankfully, he stays. This is actually quite clever. He waits for the drop-in instead, and he's going to get the boat before they land on the ground. A good pickup, and they had no idea where he was. Two headshots from far. Chris tries to jump through, but Bondick's already got Lowell down. Chris missing a shot as well. He's just ringing out exactly where he is. It's all on Nico. So Hellraisers may pick up that 10th round after all. One versus four. It is Nico, but they've got bomb down inside of the site. Yeah, I have to say, mate. Yes, it's a nice idea from us. Well, it's going completely dry there, trying to have the surprise factor. But zero, like you said, good awareness, playing far back there. They didn't use a single flashbang into the inside side. It's drop in. They have no idea where he is. He's got that silence M4, of course. So they can't really give the call off to where he is. They're assuming he's closed range directly beneath. Doesn't work out, but Nico never count him out of these sort of situations. 30 seconds remaining. Nails a first head job. Bondic up above. Oh, hits the second, but smartly Bondic changes his angle just enough and crouches as well. No AK headshot to come back out. I like this position. I've not seen that used quite like this before. And like you said, the silencer from far. They had no idea. Yeah, but the thing is, the flashbang should be coming in. There should be smokes down. It's a nice position for sure, but uh, potentially got away with a little bit too much there. The flash should be taking him out of that initial position so he doesn't get a clean shot on you when you come in. But not meant to be. 10-5, Hellraisers do reach double figures here. It's a very CT-sided map. I'd say it's probably overtaken Nuke now. Nuke for sure was uh, 
the most seedy set of map we had. It's starting to balance yeah. out slightly now. I think new train probably still takes it as number one. I'm still I'm still very surprised that Nukes balanced out that quickly. I thought there was going to need some more, be more changes in the map before that could happen. Yeah, and there has been to well, be fair has, now. Have been changed. That's true. We're going to see this at this event map. Yep. For anyone who's not aware, we are using the updated Nuke at this one, and that's where it's got some actually really pivotal game changes towards a lower bomb site and whether you can plant the bomb and stuff like that. So we're really it's excited to see who's well. adapted. And the squeaky door, yeah. Yep. You can actually you can actually blow it out now. But here we go. Head to head Matthew. Nico versus Zero. Nico, not the most explosive game for him, but he does get 13 kills. He's opened up the map. Good trades coming in as well. He's always very good for those clutches. I mean remember he did a very good job in the pistol as well. 10-5 and zero. A player not necessarily spoken about that much in the team, but he had some very impactful situations as well, particularly towards inside side there when they're up against it with low money. I need to find those key frags to keep them in this game. 10-5. I still wouldn't say that's enough hours. I still favor Mouse Sports going forward. Believe it or not. And going into this game, I'd say Mouse Sports were the team I'd choose. And with five rounds on the T side, I'd still say that's going to be my bet going forward. If they win the pistol, almost a lock-in at that point. To be fair, 13 of those kills for Nico as well were anti-eco spray downs. I think Zero's had one or two of them himself. But we're underway. And as always, analyze the buy. Look at the terrorist side. They've got a smoke yes. and a Molotov. This looks like post-plant positions on B to me. Well, look at the inside push out for the CT. This is looking nice, but it's going to be a T getting the lion's share. The kill so far just poured out towards the lower round by himself, and it doesn't look like the T will commit just yet. They know he's there. They can start the mind games now. They have the man advantage. They still have flashbangs, a Molotov, and of course, the Tech 9 Superman buy for zero. That's actually worked out really nicely. The CT's expecting the inner push. One's pushing Ivy as well. Inside, outside plant coming all day long. Absolutely. And Angel's gone up toward the hell position as well. Dennis is going to try and wrap around, give up that position at Ivy. He's got no information as to what's going on at Sandwich. Instead, that'll be Nico's obligation. He'll rotate into the lane. Dennis is the one with the kit, but he's so far away from everything right now. If he goes down near the bomb, okay, kit's grabbable right now. He's at A main. Instead, it's Nico to take battle with Angel. No one's going to be able to pop out in position to try and cancel that off. That's Dead Fox or Ebox, but Angel doesn't need it. He's got a kill. Dead Fox will hold on to cover off A main and. It's down to just the Spaniard low finding one, but surely going to go down double peaking. It has to go for the reload, and that'll do it. Well, there it is. It's the CTs, like we always talk about, Matt. That inside side, very lucrative on the T pistol. Push that towards it together as a team. You can actually almost guarantee yourself the bomb down there. That's what the CTs are trying to count, uh, counteract at that point. They're pushing three towards the lower ramp, looking for those fast frags at the start. They've got their key players there towards it. Nico, Chris J, for example. But they, they find a little bit of a trade there, but the man advice goes towards hell races. They're forcing rotations out of the T's as well, but they hold up. They don't fully commit. They go back towards the outer site. We've got one player there in the seat who's actually pushed Ivy, trying to pincer them in towards the inside site. Two holding in her. It works out very nicely indeed and hell raises good mid-round calls that's a good a sign of a, a solid in-game leader someone who can actually react on the fly doesn't have to commit to a strategy just because they found kills there playing the bigger picture and working out for him very well indeed we'll look at the force by from mouse sports here a ump comes off allow that's an interesting one he gets some body armor as well pg50s of course chris j full eco he's the orpa and Lau getting some decent positions here with the aforementioned smg Bondic will be waiting for him. This is a nice, this, this is the antiques I love, Matt. Not rushing in outside or rushing inside, going all together right at the start. Just hold up. You've got the huge advantage here of the rifles and the utility as well. Use it. Treat it like a gun round. Don't throw everything away on a little bit of a gamble. Just try and get it over quickly. And we've had this conversation many, many times. We it have. Like, it feels like a constant nightmare of it, mine. It, yeah. Uh, if that's your only nightmare compared to what I, I could think of you dreaming about, then I'm not that worried about you <laughs> It's anymore, one of my nightmares. Yeah, either way, that push up from Lowell, that's exactly what you're talking about. You walk into that, he gets a gun down for a teammate with that stack near Sandwich. They can quickly grab it, So the take key, advantage. The key objective right in these rounds, you hold up, you see where the CT's pushing, find one kill, then execute together. This is still going to matter. Oh, good pickup from Bondic. We didn't quite see it, but that is such an important kill. Because they were going to try and split 3-2, and it's all worked out on the fact that I take it back. Lovely, Hello. Speedy. That's clever. Deny it with a knife. A bit of a shot, but Nico's gonna push through said smoke and be completely blinded up. So as a result, it's just Speedy remaining. At least he's got some money for his efforts. Well, that will be a full Eco next round, regardless of his knifing antics. But you can see, not giving anything away. 20 seconds remaining. Speedy does line them up and find another kill. So he actually gets a ton of money. That's another $600 on top of his 1500 from the knife as well. If he had taken Angel down, the other two were on red HP, both of them. The UMP would have been enough. I love it. I do, I do like it. Yeah, it's not... Not as exciting normally as a knife can be. Obviously, it's pretty good done. He gets extra money. Don't sure. ruin it for me, Henry. I'm trying not to. I'm trying to just be a realist right now and just keep everyone calm, you know? But, um, yeah, full eco this round. It will be Hellraiser is almost certainly getting to 13-5. And like I said, Mouse not picking up this pistol. That's when it becomes problematic here. They're going to be slightly limited. Good news is they didn't fully invest into that second round in terms of the force buy. So 
They do have grenades and defuse kits to work with, and rifles at least. Chris J, especially with the AWP, that's a big factor going forward. But now Hellraiser's once again. Don't overcommit, don't have to rush, boys. Just hold back, use the smokes. We saw a full execution from Hellraiser's. Lock it out, eradicate risks, find kills, and make sure together you're refragging. Now Sports really struggling on that concept in the first half. And I'll see what happens here. Should just be a lock-in for Hellraiser's. Towards inside, got information. Brown Hall's clear. Picking towards upper ramp, try and find a kill. If you find one, then you can commit. You can pretty much ascertain it's going to be a clear situation at that point. Oh, zero. There it is. It doesn't get much better than that. Yeah, the second one, just as it crouches away. So if they slip the momentum away from themselves in the first half, they're definitely pointing back early on here with good effect and good in return on investment. I was going to say good investment, but more importantly, return on those SMGs as well. Yeah, well, that's just like, this is not full bonus round, but going to that first gun round, they're going to have a Mac 10, a UMP, or two of those, and a Galil as well. It's a great situation to be in. It's not, it's like the worst problem you can have a Counter-Strike, right? Having so much money and doing so well in the early rounds, that you're left with the lesser weapons. It's actually a great place to be, because even if you don't win the round, the next one, you're just trying to find kills. Any kills you get in that bonus round are fantastic. And if you do win it, pretty much GG for the CTs, especially in this scenario. Lau might find one kill here. It's about as good as it's going to get. He doesn't. So like I said, this is like the bonus round. That's why we call it the going to the lesser weapons. You want to keep the money high rolling going into this one. They might upgrade an AK here or there. I'll have a look and see if that happens. So they've got one AK right now, and they throw something out. So two AKs come in. That kind of makes sense. It's a difficult situation to be in, regardless. You want to actually balancing something. I'm actually investing quite a lot in that, you know? Not even going with that bonus round. Yep, it's like, let's just close this out win. right here, right now. Let's not risk anything. The only one that I could see... Oh, they do get an op-out, so they drop it over yeah. to... I was going to say, Dead Fox might save wait for the... Hey, that... Okay, I thought... Yeah, okay, there was the knife animation. I thought he actually knifed his teammate there. I was like, come on. It starts to matter when you invest that much. So exactly what you say. If you keep the SMGs up, even if you lose it, you're going to get return on investment for each kill you find with those SMGs. If you win it on top of that, great. You've just built yourself so much cash. You basically get two free rounds in hand after a loss. If you lose it, you still have money to buy into the next one, which is essentially the buy they've gone for here. So they're actually putting themselves in a position where they still have to convert this. They're all right on three out of four, or excuse me, three out of five players, but could have been a lot more. Either way, they want to get this done and dusted. They don't want to take any chances. There is an AWP against them. They've read that well. Sticko, good entrance. Fine speedy. But Chris J, AWP in position. Not only that, as a smoke to his right, he's going to try and catch them off. Unfortunately, Bondic gets in behind him, and that's going to completely pull his aggro away. Distracted and downed. It won't matter about bonus because they've got this one done. This is the problem when you have this amount of better rounds and huge money going forward. You know, the CTs are weak after forcing the second. You do something nice and loose towards the inside area as well. Walk into the upper ramp. It's very unorthodox and be quite hard to handle. Not many CTs we're waiting for that as well. They find the first kill. Chaos ensues. And now there's four of Dennis and four of one. You might get one kill. Not even that. 14-5, homing in on map point, and that's normally an eco for the CT to this stage. What do you do here? Pick your poison. Do you take an eco and allow her to get to 15, or do you go all in and potentially give them the GG? No, nothing is the right answer, I'm afraid. It's just what you feel like at this point. What team game leader decides to bring to the table? So you can see the impulse comes in, and uh, here we go then. What's the play? It's going to be... The more conservative option, take the eco, allow Hellraiser to get to 15 rounds, and then you need 10 rounds in a row. And uh, just to stay alive and force it to overtime. Very, very unlikely, but it's pretty much the best bet they've got right now. Yeah, tough situation for most sports to be in. We said it was a team rebuilding and falling away. Speedy does manage to collect on the second bullet. Zero on the way through with the headshot on the Deagle. Call it a two Deag. On the is going to get in position to put a Molotov out, cut off rotations. That's going to tag up just one tick onto Chris. But unfortunately, I dare say, round over. Exactly like you said, it's play for overtime. Ten rounds they'll need. Well, it is trained, you said. Uh, you give it the nod now for most CT side. Yeah. But you don't have much rolling right now. Yeah, this is the thing. It's certainly a CT sided map, but not a team like Mouse Sports does not make a single mistake. That, that's a tall order. We'll see what happens here. Just Nico remaining now. Body armor probably wants to save that. I'm afraid he's going to have. A 4 on one situation. I'm going to have a look at the money myself and see what they're going to get. So maximum loss bonus. So yeah, it's certainly a full buy. And Chris J will have the orb, but such a better rounds. Hellraiser is going to switch forward to make some loser calls at this point. They can just do another inside player or a fast execution off the bat. Rush out IV with three players. Like It's just a matter of just doing something a little bit crazy that CDs don't expect. Close it out before they have a chance to really get rolling here. But Nico does save the body armor and the deagle. And we're going to... Potentially last round here, like you said, 10 rounds in a row for Hellraisers. They've looked fantastic here. Mouse Sports 
clinging on for dear life here. I like Nico's cheeky little mentality at the end. The <laughs> Wayne Gretzky missed every shot you don't take. Just fires at the exit point toward the stairwell in case they're leaving with the Deagle. Yeah. Look for that one chance shot. Okay, then. Something to smile about before you try and make this crazy comeback work. Tactical pause for Mass Fourth makes sense at this stage. Probably wanted to just make sure you take this pause. Could be your last or your last round as well. And uh, yeah, gives I'm... them thirty seconds to write their will. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Kits come in. Orp is purchased. Four and fours as well. There is a nice array of utility, but like I said, not a single mistake can be made here. Chris Jay, like we said in the beginning of the, the first half, was getting some opening picks at all, but since then he's dropped off 8 for 18 right now. And he's supposed to be one of the, the superstars along with Nico in this team. Again, now there's this deep hot approach. Not going to be rushing a particular area like I speculated, but Chris Jay, shotgun orb style towards lower ramp, trying to find the first pick here. Will be challenged. Zero to go in the corner first potentially as well, but the orb's going to be joining him as well. This pick is huge and dead box. Oh, Chris J out of the water there. Five on four to kick things off. That's massive. Big start. AWP gone. B forces rotation. Thins them out very early. Dennis and a though. big <laughs> tag on Dennis. Yep. This is a nightmare now. We haven't seen as much flashy plays from it. They said on the desk as well that Nico's gone a little more quiet as of late. Seems to be true in this game. We haven't seen the brilliance. We know him before. And we're definitely going to need to right now if they want any chance to pull this back. He's going to go. He's going to try and climb up. Catch them off. Sticko's just coming down the hallway with the bomb. He's gotten up there, but as he looked the right direction, there's one on either side, and Sticko immediately him behind him. Trigger discipline, but is he going to wait too long because he's got a player to his right? Thankfully, Dice take him down. I take back. Hold on, let me hang out my hands here. Oh, that's the left, not the right. Sorry, I got it backwards, Henry. Yeah, well, still, Nico gives him something to work with here. That was looking like it fell apart. He gets the timing dead on there. Dennis, though, 15 HP. Angel knows he's tacked him as well. We hit the 35 second mark. So Angel towards Ivy. Looks like it will be an outside split here. And the CTs don't really have any information. They looked like they're going towards Inner. And Nico shut that down. So Dennis can't really afford to actually be actively facing towards Ivy. Yet. He decides to do it. That's why he can't, because he's going to get taken down by one bullet. Interesting decision from him. And you want to play very passive there. But still, down to Lauer now. Can he hold off Angel? Spots the shoulder. Good play. Nico's two kills starting to benefit them as they pull it back to a dead even situation. Time running out as well, considering this was a four versus five at minute 10, it's down to seven seconds and damage dealt. Bondic pushed back, capitalized on by the pistol and Sticko caught in the open. Nine to go, Henry. Just about. And they keep two players up here. So the CTs, they're gonna be struggling for cash man in terms of reinvestment. Terrorists have got money for days. Nice replay from Nico. Might all be in vain though, because the reinvestment coming in, I think we have UMPs, a couple of M4s and the terrorists, they're fully equipped. I don't think there's an AWP available for Mass Force. It must have been dropped. I'm not sure they've recovered that. I missed that. I don't think it has been, you know. So, no, no AWP to work with it. No, that's going to be an antiquity here. Not like he's been, he had a huge impact so far, but still, uh, it's an interesting note. There's going to be a UMP or a pause. They do have some utility to work with. Dead Fox back on the AWP here for things up last time. And we'll see whether Mass Force can hold on once again. Yeah, Blow out of the windows. Bondic, meanwhile, bit of utility thrown to try and get his teammate, Dead Fox, AWP, in position. Angel will stay there to babysit him, and Bondic will head back to where the bombs drop down at the top of the stairwell. So a 2 2 1 split for the terrorists, Sticko and Zero being the other two, obviously looking over toward B. And Nico's down below. He's getting a little more aggressive into this pop dog position. Obviously, it worked last time. Limited to the UMP this time around, though, even though they did pick up the round. That's all he's got left to buy. Sticko, you've already done that once. Yeah, just got to make sure, you know. It is Valve. They probably have invisible double pane glass now. True. Well then, 15-6. 50 seconds remaining. It looks like an outside execution from what I can see right now. The build-up would suggest that. One player in towards the pop dog position. We're lining some smokes as well. One in Ivy. But yeah, a classic outside take here, Matt. Textbook Counter-Strike. We'll see whether it works out for him. 35 seconds there, that's a bit, a little bit too close for comfort. Nico can take some damage, he has to force himself in towards the pop dog. Doesn't Pick up matter. Nico. Again, he gets that position, it's starting to work for him. He's got to stay aggressive, but they're going to read that. Oh, oh. the wrong direction at exactly the wrong time, though, and in comes the Hellraisers. And unfortunately, even though Nico finds that pick, it's a one versus four. And I dare say map done. We'll see if Speedy can find it. Low HP on Angel, if he can isolate him. He's the one playing out toward Ivy at this point in time, but... The rest of them all babysitting each other, and they don't even get that far. Sticko finds it a very, very convincing win. 
9 2 at a point. They did lose the momentum. It looked like it might go back to 9 6, but then they make no mistake on the second half. Very flat from Mouse Sports there. They were 9 2 down, but they